Hi, Philip McIntosh here, and we're real excited to be over at the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs in the chemistry lab here with a couple of students and a professor who are going to help us learn a little bit more about distillation today. This is Taylor Liptak. Hello, Taylor. Hi, how are you? And what do you do here? Um, I am president of the student members of the American Chemical Society Club. I'm also a sophomore healthcare science major, chemistry minor, and organic chemistry this year. Awesome. And also assisting, uh, assisting us today is Bryce Brownfield. Hi there. Uh, my name is Bryce. I'm a sophomore here. Biochemistry is my major. I am the uh, vice president of the student members of the American Chemical Society. I'm real happy to be helping out today. Awesome. And uh, we're just going to take a real quick just tour of their lab facility right here. They've got a lot of excellent equipment. And then we're going to get right down to it. All right? All right. All right. So these are our fume hoods. This is for all of the toxic chemicals that we work with so we don't inhale any of the fumes and get any bad side effects from it. Um, this lifts up here so we can do our work. We have a couple different nozzles under here that we work with. This one is air. Most of you just use that to dry things out and stuff like that. Um, this is going to be our vacuum. We'll show you that in a little bit for our vacuum uh, filtration over there. That just sucks up right there. Uh, and then we also have a water spout down there in the back and that's this knob right here. Okay, so over here we just wanted to point out a couple safety things here in the room. So in the event that something does happen, you get chemicals in your eyes, it's really not good. You don't want to go blind. So you're going to come over here to our eye wash station. You're going to wash your eyes out for 15 full minutes. We also have a safety shower in case you get chemicals on your body. We're not going to pull this because we don't want to flood the room, but it is there in case you need it. So I just wanted to show you guys the safety gear that I have on. So you can see that I have goggles to protect my eyes, nitrile gloves to protect my hands, as well as lab coat, pants, closed-toed shoes, and my hair pulled back. In case there is an accident in the lab, we want to make sure that we're working safely so that our bodies won't be harmed. Taylor here again, and I'm here to show you how we're going to separate a solid from a liquid using vacuum filtration. Over here in our fume hood, we have our vacuum filtration trap set up. It's connected over here to our vacuum valve into the filtration trap, which is going to make sure that nothing gets stuck in our mixture and it's going to suck all of our liquid and air out of our buchner funnel over here that we have set up to drain our liquid into to collect our salt. So here's our mixture. The first thing we're going to do is put this filter paper in this funnel so that none of the solid will go through those holes there. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. We're going to get it a little wet to create the seal and then we're going to turn on the vacuum. With that vacuum on, this should be firmly sealed down there so that I can't pull that up. Now what we're going to do is dump our mixture over here into the trap. And you can see that all of our liquid is draining through the funnel into the flask. The vacuum is sucking the liquid out and we're left with our solid in here. So now what we're going to do is let that dry for five to six minutes and then collect our solid product. So now we've waited the appropriate amount of time and it looks like our crystals have formed in our filtration so we're going to go ahead and lift that up and collect our product. So you can see in here that all of our product is in the top of this little funnel. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to turn off the vacuum. And that releases our suction and now we can pull this up here. I'm going to use this little spatula to just collect my filter paper and get that pulled out here. See those beautiful crystals there? It looks really good. Now we're just going to scrape that onto our watch glass here. Get the remainder out of our funnel. works and now we have our benzoic acid crystals. Hi, I'm here with uh, John Ballier who is an instructor in the chemistry department here at UCCS. Thank you for uh, hosting us tonight. Glad to be here. Yeah, I just want to ask you a couple of questions like distillation separates things based on their boiling points, correct? That's correct. And uh, why would somebody even want to separate something on their boiling? What are the practical uses of, of distillation? Well, the practical use is a lot of times you need something, a compound that's pure, 
uh, say like in for medical purposes or pharmaceuticals or things like that, or just things that we we consume, a lot of beverages that we uh, consume, they have to be pure. They have to be free from contaminants that are formed during the course of the reaction. Okay? And so we use distillation to separate the good stuff from the stuff that we don't want. Okay? Um, I understand that distillation is also used in the petroleum industry um, for like collecting gasoline out of crude oil. Is that true? That's true. Yeah, there is in a typical barrel of crude, there's probably 30 or 40 different products that are uh, that are obtained from that crude oil, all based on boiling point. Some are very, very high boiling, and some boil at very low temperatures, and we use those in light oils and things like that. So oil, kerosene, gasoline, lubricants, right. uh, fuel oil, yep. all of that stuff comes out of that black gunk that we suck out of the earth. It sure does. That's amazing. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. So these are the two products that we're going to be separating via our simple distillation. Our first one is hexane with its structure here, six carbons, 14 hydrogens. Our second one is toluene, structure here, it's a ring with a methyl group, seven carbons and eight hydrogens. The hexane is going to produce vapors first and be collected first because it has the lower boiling point of 68.7 degrees Celsius, whereas toluene has a much higher boiling point at 110.6. Hi, Bryce here again. I'm going to show you how we separate two organic compounds using simple distillation. Uh, this is our setup that we have all set up here for you. Right here, the setup that we have, we have a round bottom flask here. That is where the products are going to go. That's connected to a side arm right there that leads all the vacuum or all the um, vapors into a condenser right here. This condenser is a little tube. This is another one right here, as you can see. There's a tube on the outside and it has a tube on the inside also. And what that does is it allows water to cool on the outside while the vapors can still travel through the middle without being in contact with the water. So we have our two tubes here, one that goes into a water inlet right there and one that goes right down into the drain so we don't make a big mess. That comes down here into an elbow into a collection flask right here that we can collect our products. This right here, we have a thermometer there and that is just so we can monitor the uh, vapor temperature of the vapors so we can tell which compound we are distilling at what point of the experiment. All right, so we have roughly three milliliters of each of these compounds right here that we're gonna go ahead and add to the round bottom flask. And then another important part in the distillation is going to be boiling chips or boiling sticks or something like that. We're gonna be using boiling chips today. They don't look like much, just little rocks there. And those are just give something for the compound to make bubbles on. It gives it something to boil on so it doesn't splash up and things like that. Go ahead and add just a couple of those to the round bottom flats. And seal it back up on the side arm there. And then we are all ready to go. So now what we are going to do, we have a plate here, a uh, heating block, and what that's going to do is it's going to disperse the heat and allow it to get all the way around the round bottom flask and heat the whole thing even. So we can go ahead and lower this. And now a very important part that you don't want to forget is to turn the water on to the condenser so we don't lose any product. You want to do that very slowly so you don't make the tubes pop off or anything like that. You don't need much, just a little bit. You want it to come out of the end of the hose just about like that. Not a whole lot of water. Now we can go ahead and turn on the heat. sit for a little bit. It's going to make it take it a little bit of time for it to get up to temperature and we'll show you once it gets going. Alright and as you can see here our thermometer is reading roughly 40 degrees, a little bit above. 
um, and that is telling us that we're not quite at the boiling point for either one of our compounds. Um, once it reaches about 65 to 70, we should start seeing some vapors come off and start a distillation. All right, and we're just about getting up to 65, a little bit above that degrees Celsius, um, and we're going pretty good now. This, this distillation's going along. So we're now right at about 80 degrees Celsius. We're moving right along in our distillation. Um, we'll go ahead, right now we're gonna change beakers here to collect a different product there. And the reason that we're doing that is the product that's being distilled now is gonna be more pure on the toluene side, and that is the second compound that we're distilling. So this beaker has mostly hexane, some toluene in it, um, this beaker will have mostly toluene with a little bit of hexane in it. And if we wanted to distill this further, we could do it again, a third, a fourth time if we'd like to. We can make um, a, a more pure and an even more pure product than that if we'd like to. So the reason that we're using this small scale apparatus is that it's more friendly to the environment, we waste less chemicals, and it's also a lot less time consuming than if we were to use a larger flask. All right, and right now we're just about almost at 100 degrees Celsius, uh, and the boiling point of toluene, if you remember, is actually 110.6 degrees Celsius. We're not quite there, we're almost done with our distillation. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of liquid left there, and we don't want to go all the way or else this whole thing could explode, and we really want to avoid that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and stop right here. But this is going to be mostly toluene right here, our distilled product. Well, that concludes our brief time here at the UCCS Chemistry Lab with this uh, demonstration of distillation and vacuum filtration. I'd like to thank the uh, members of the staff and student body here for helping us out with it. So thanks a lot, guys. And so what do you guys think about distillation anyway? We think it's great. It's awesome.